previously, I released a video about the Pico Mem Card project. This is a DIY memory card for the PlayStation 1 based around a Raspberry Pi Pico. Those are development boards that, incredibly, cost less than $10. A link to the video on how to build one can be found in the description, so I won't delve too deeply into the finer details today. But just as I was wrapping up that video, the project's developer, Dan Gaiu, released an update that allows the integration of an SD card. With the original Pico Mem card, only one memory card image could be saved to the Pico's internal memory at a time. The project's update, however, dubbed Pico Mem Card Plus, incorporates an SD card expansion board that allows multiple memory cards. Each image is only 128 kilobytes, so even the smallest capacity SD card allows for potentially hundreds of images. Watch the previous video first if you haven't already, but for everyone else, let's transform this Pico Mem card into a Plus model. First, I'll need to remove the PCB from the 3D printed case I designed as the SD expansion won't fit. If you're just building a standard Pico Mem card, I've made the 3D files available online. There's a link with my original video. Here is the micro SD card expansion module that we'll be installing. Much like the Pico, these are very affordable and also cost less than $10. Fortunately, the developer had this expansion in mind from the beginning. The PCB features a row of pads specifically for these modules, so I don't need to order an updated version. We'll need to remove the header from the expansion board, however. To achieve that, I'll be using my new toy, an electric desoldering station. This has been a great addition to my repair desk. All in all, it took less than a minute and a half to desolder the header. Who knows how long it would have taken with braid. I then prepared the pads on the PCB, deliberately adding enough solder so they were raised bumps. This is so it would be easier to line up the corresponding through holes on the module. This made soldering the two pieces together trivial, and after a quick confirmation everything was connected using a multimeter, we were good to go. Came out pretty clean if I don't say so myself. Now it was time for the software side of things. The Pico needs to be flashed with an updated image that supports SD cards. Like in the last video, the Pico's boot cell button needs to be held down while it's plugged into a computer. From there, the correct .uf2 file, depending on what hardware you're using, is copied across to the Pico. The download page for these files is linked in the description. It will appear to eject itself once the file is copied across. Now, if you plug in an SD card, you'll be able to transfer the memory card images directly through the Pico. You won't need to hold down the boot cell button for this. That's only necessary when flashing the Pico's ROM. Alternatively, you can transfer files directly to the SD card if that's easier. The memory card images need to be named in a specific way. The first image is 0.mcr, the second is 1.mcr, the third is 2.mcr, and so on. The file name 0 will be the first to boot when the PlayStation is turned on. This time around, the developer has created a 3D model for the case that incorporates the SD card module. You'll find it on the GitHub. This is somewhat similar to my design, but is instead in one piece and uses less material. It only took 40 minutes to print as well. At this point, however, I ran into issues. Plugging it into my PlayStation, I was confronted with a blinking LED and a blank memory card manager. According to the GitHub, the blinking LED means it's failing to read the SD card. I was confident the module was working, however, since I was able to read the SD card through the Pico when that was plugged into my computer. I raised an issue on the GitHub and was advised by the developer to tape off the 3 volt contact on the PCB and run it independently on 5 volts as a test. Although it should be noted to never run 5 volt through the Pico while it's plugged into the PlayStation if that 3 volt contact isn't taped off. You run the risk of 5 volt going through the PS1's 3 volt power rail otherwise. Anyway, I gave the test a go and what do you know, it was working. The blinking LED was now solid and the test image was appearing in the memory card manager. It turns out that someone has been telling Porky's about these modules ability to run at 3 volts. They are advertised as such, along with 5 volts, but that appears to not be the case. Exploring the rest of the issues raised on the GitHub, it looks like I wasn't the only one with this issue. That's disappointing to see, but I had no choice but to order another unit, this time from a more reputable looking source. It looks the same, but includes a few subtle differences. The new module, for instance, doesn't have the marking HW125. It was a right pain to remove the solder connection this time around, since it was sandwiched between the module and the PCB. I got there eventually, however, when I was ready to install the newly bought module, but then I made a mistake which wasn't filmed. I was removing the header from the new module, but pulled it too prematurely. Since it wasn't properly desoldered, I accidentally pulled out the innards of the through holes as well. 
I thought I could get around this by scraping back the solder mask and soldering directly to the traces, but all the exposed copper was connecting to ground. I guess it must be a multi-leveled board and the traces aren't on the top surface or something like that. So I ordered yet another module, this time with Express Post. This time around, I decided to solder directly to the pre-installed header so I didn't replicate the previous accident. Annoyingly, even with the headers bent down, it's still too short to reach the PCB. To get around this, I created these bodgy looking solder bridges. Luckily, there were no cold joints and everything connected. But guess what? I encountered the exact same issue as the first module. I again plugged in this 5 volt power supply and confirmed that this module doesn't run on 3 volt either. How annoying. So, giving up on those modules and sick of waiting around for postage during the holiday season, I instead bought this locally from JCAR. It's too big and uses full size SD cards, but it was cheap and importantly includes a separate pad for 3 volts. The wiring was a bit how you doing since the pads aren't in the same order as the PCB, but the bloody thing at least works. Yay. Once it's plugged in, the memory card images can be cycled by holding down the start and select buttons and pushing up or down on the directional pad. You can also create new memory card images by holding down start and select and then pushing the triangle button. However, the controller needs to be plugged into the same corresponding port as the memory card for the button combos to work. As far as my personal usage goes, I'm going to keep using the Pico Memcard Plus as a means to run the 3PSX boot exploit. This is handy for the channel as it allows me to play expensive, rare or prototype games on original hardware. I covered this more thoroughly in the original video, but otherwise it's also nice to have access to limitless memory cards as the originals slowly die out and corrupt.